Hey guys, welcome to my new Poro tutorials. I'm so happy because I cleaned up a lot of stuff. So anyways, this is my next Poro tutorial, which is going to be a, um, me showing you how I drew my Poro playing with a ball of yarn. For those of who, you who don't know what a Poro is, they're those fluffy creatures from League of Legends with ram horns. Um, so I'll show you the final product that I have right here. This is what I will be basing it off of. Um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe. And also, don't forget to check down in the description box below. Because down there, there will be all my social media. So please like and follow those so that way you get updates constantly. And also new thing you guys can support me on patreon if you like my art to make more videos like this so that way i can make more videos like this so you can support me on patreon and you get digital exclusives if you do support me there so just a little bonus and a reward when you guys try and do that um, so now we're going to do it. I'm so happy because I cleaned my room. I'll show you guys after, but I cleaned most of it, like, in the front at least. Um, so yeah, so. Let's begin. This is very awkward, sorry. I need to rethink this one moment. Um, usually this is not... The reason why the stand, the reason why this wasn't good is because it's like, okay, there, okay, so let's begin. First, we want to start on his forehead, which is where I always start. If you want to check out more of my other Poro tutorials, they will be on my Poro tutorials playlist. I've already done two so far um by the time you guys see this video i've only done two so far so um first we're gonna start with his forehead um so we're gonna go in a curve and go upwards and then the tip has to be round when it's going back down but don't go down all the way to the same point just like this and then we're going to go curve back up but this time this part is going to be larger and then we're going to curve back down and this time we're curving around we're stopping at around the same point as the other point which i'm pointing at right now and then in the middle of this curve in the middle of how we went down we're going to start again and don't go up as much as the last curve that we did but we want to go down right there so so this part is not equal to like this part it's like it's down but it's not stopping the same area like equal height um and then we want to do so now we're gonna do the horns so that's why it's gonna start looking a bit odd on the head so bear with me um so we curve downwards and we curve about to here and curve upwards here so this will be the part of a part of the horn that's on the bottom part of the horn so you can see the attachment of it on the head next we're going to do this part so you start where you first made that part and you curve upwards diagonally to the right ish and then you want to start curving it downwards a bit and keep curving it until you hit around here now um you're gonna curve it 
almost as if you're slightly making a spiral, but don't, like, complete it entirely. Checking to make sure that it's focused. And now from where we stopped here on the horn, we're going to go down. And you're going to follow the same spiral that you just did. And this time, you want it to gradually get smaller until you hit there. So it's like a, a horn and it's a, like a spike. Um, next, we're going to do the forehead part because it's easier to go by the head part first so first you're gonna curve down like a little like part of a circle so you want to make sure the body of the poro is kind of like a circle kind of like a circle but not entirely and then we're going to make a fluff that curves outwards so like this and then Make sure the fluff is not spiky. This poro that I drew is a less spiky one. And then you go, you curve the opposite way. And you want this curve to be a little bit like reaching lower than that curve. And you want to go in a little out again. And then in again. And then you stop right around there so next you're going to actually start making the rest of the mouth so you're gonna actually start here so it's not on the mouth but kind of above the mouth ish and you're gonna go down and fluff like that and this one the next fluff is kind of bigger and then this part is a bit tricky, but what you're going to do is you're going to make this part curve downwards, like, like, that way, like a rainbow, like how a rainbow curves downwards. So that part curves downwards, and then you curve back upwards, kind of following the curve pattern that goes that way, but you don't really want to complete it, like, don't make it thin, make it thick like that. Okay, and next is the rest of the body. So you want to start from here-ish. And then we're going to make a little spike right here. And then start going. Keep going. Now this part is a bit tricky because it's the arm. So you curve... Start from here-ish, near the corner of the mouth. So you want to start here and make it go down. Now um, now you want to make like an upside-down-ish teardrop for the claws. So for this pearl, I kind of made the claws a bit sharp compared to... One of my other portals that I drew. And then you can make the middle one the bigger one. And then the last one will be the smallest. So it's so there's a size difference between the claws. So it looks like there's some depth to it when you're looking at it. So next is you're going to start from the tiny little claw here at the edge. And you're going to curve upwards towards the right. You're going to make a tiny spike, and you're going to keep going till you reach around here. Now, we're going to start it at the, the rest of the body at the end, like, underneath. You want it to look like it's coming from underneath, so make sure that it's, like, it looks like it's coming from underneath completely, the body. And you want to go curve up. And I did two spikes here, so one, two. Um, technically, for any of the spikies that are for fluffs, you don't have to completely follow what I'm doing. But if you want the general shape or to make it look a bit fluffy, this is how you can do it. I'm just making it easier by following my guide. Um, 
and you want it to keep curving up and then I made another spike here so I'm going to do that and complete it right about here so there is the rest of the body now we want to go for the other hand so the other paw thing and start around here so under the mouth like leave a little bit of a gap under the mouth and go down here curve it down don't just put it down and then next we're gonna do the claws actually we're gonna do the rest of the arm first so underneath this spike right here if you guys can see um sorry the angle's weird i'm trying to work around my tablet and then you just curve downwards make it like it's getting smaller towards the other one so that way it looks like they're gonna close on each other but don't close it and then you want to do this same claw thing the little teardrop like shapes and it doesn't matter if it doesn't completely close you can always close it back down like i'm doing and is there a hair okay so that's that and then we're gonna put in the detail for the other horns so you want to go a bit here for the forehead i don't know if you guys can see it for the forehead and curve it up to up and down towards this second spike of hair and then for the detailing you can just go make a curve that's going downwards in the horns so it makes the horns look like they're actually horns and they're not just like big random things <laughs> and then you can choose how many you want to do like how many curves you want to do for me i only did two to symbolize that it's like a medium size ish type of horn um and then for the other leg you want to go from this second spike follow my pencil don't follow my finger sorry and then curve downwards and you want to do one spike near the body and the other spike kind of not near the body so i'm gonna need to fix my foot a little but there it is and then the other foot will just be hidden because it's fluffy um and then you do the eyes how i do the eyes is anime style so you can choose what type of eye you want to do Basically, I do a line, a curve, and this curve I make, it have like, it's thick. So you do two lines over each other. So you see that there's an extra thing. It's hard to see, but it's there. There's like extra lines that you can see in the front. And then you do the bottom, and then... You make a circle-ish. You make an oval, but you don't hit, you don't touch that bottom line that you made. You only touch the top line. And then I just go like this and this. And those are the reflections. So I only color in around any of the white spots that I just made. Like so. It's hard to see, but there's like two, there's two white circles there, and then there's one there. So you keep those white, so that way it looks like it's reflection-y, and it's cute. And then you just put a tiny little line above the eye, so that way it looks like, I don't know, it looks like that eyelid spot, like, where your eyes would, your eyelids would be. But I don't know if they have eyelids, to be honest. It's just a wrinkle part to show that it's the eye. And then the next one, I'll just do it here quickly. Okay. 
You don't have to do these eyes, to be honest. I only do them because I want it to be in my style, personally. But you guys can do you, or you guys can search up reference photos of a Poro and actually draw the eyes the accurate way. I'm just doing my own style. Okay. Next is the tongue. So, I kind of go from the second... The third type of fluff here and go down and kind of curve it up and then I add a special little line to show that it's a tongue and then for the yarn I made it super simple and easy so what you want to do is put it close to the claws create a circle so just draw a circle. I normally sketch out circles. I'm not like someone who just does a circle like that. So if you want to know how to do accurate circles, basically that's what you do. You just sketch it out slowly and make sure it's even. Um, a little trick from me. Um, so next you want to do the detailing of the yarn. So basically I curve a line upwards like this so it's curving that way so it's like ooh, i'm doing the motion right now and i do around one two three so around four ish um it's supposed to be in the center, but it's, if it's off-center, it's fine. It still gives your ball of yarn a personality. And next, you're going to want to make random lines. So what I did is I didn't fill in a lot of lines. I basically just went like... So for each line you make, you want to make sure it comes out at the bottom, and then you make another line parallel to it. So it's kind of like it is a string. And then I just go diagonally, and then I just go whatever way, and you can go whatever way you want. These lines, you don't have to add so many lines to the point where it's like, what's going on? I just add however much I desire, and... It's fine if there are gaps, it doesn't matter, because if you color it in, it's just there. Next, I'm going to do the yarn string. So I'm just gonna, you can actually draw it any way you want. I just curved it like a snake, kind of. So basically, it's just coming out of the ball of yarn. And there. And then you've got your very own Poro playing with yarn. Now, um, I didn't bother. The reason why I use pencil for this tutorial is because I don't know how it will handle the ink. And these papers are like, and normally I want to use the ink for my pen for other stuff. So I don't know. I just prefer to use the pencil. So that way, if I make any mistakes, I can erase it. So I'm going to put it side by side comparison. So here it is, and they look the same, but a bit different, and it's okay if yours turns out a bit different, or if the eyes are a bit closer than these eyes. You don't actually, like, every time you draw a poro, it doesn't have to be the same, because, you know, they're different, and I totally forgot if I mentioned that they were, did I mention they were from League of Legends? Yeah, I think I did mention, sorry. I just had a memory blank. But basically, it's okay if they look a bit different. They're obviously not going to look the same. Every time I draw a character, they don't look entirely the same as the last drawing. So it gives them a slight different personality. Like, this one's tiny and cute. And this one's... Big and fluffy. <laughs> so yeah, so that's it for that. And I'll show you guys. You guys might think it's messy, but the reason why I didn't want to do a 
bedroom tours because from here to here it was really messy. I cleaned it quite a bit. I just need to, I think I'm gonna sell that house actually for my calico critters. I think I might get rid of that, but yeah, I cleaned it. Um, eventually when I get rid of this table, because it's a kid's table, I'm actually going to get rid of it and then I'm going to put in shelves, which I can put my stuffed animals on because legit my stuffed animals are everywhere and they need to be on some place where I'm, I feel okay that they're on because I don't want them to be on the floor and there have been incidents where like bugs would walk into my room and then they would like die on the floor and then I'd be concerned that my stuffed animals would get dirty from that so yeah so um I know it doesn't look clean to you guys but it's pretty clean to me it's working slowly I think I cleaned up around 20% of my room which is not that bad for a start I would say um, but if I get it all cleaned up, maybe I'll do a bedroom tour. It's just because if you guys haven't noticed that I've been only doing, like, my bed tour, not a bedroom tour. The reason why I don't do a bedroom tour is because it's pretty messy and there's not much walking space. And it bugs me every time I have to walk to the back of my room because it has, like, it has thinner space than this. So I'm continuously trying to do that. But, yeah, all my drawing stuff is on the floor, and usually that's what creates a mess. Right now, the mess is my drawing stuff. So, yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and don't forget to check down on the description box below. There will be my social media accounts. Please like and follow those. Don't forget to subscribe, and also check out my Patreon because you get digital exclusives. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye!